21. The femur. Longest bone in the body. Femur. Longest bone. And uh, longest and second strongest bone in the body, and it's designed to permit maximum mobility and support during locomotion. It's really tough to break this bone, and if it's broken, e holy cow, you're gonna hear some people crying. You ever seen a broken femur? You have? I've never seen one. Femur. Here? No, we were at other ways. Oh, what did I say? Straight up. All right. All right. Look at here. I even found pictures to include on this. Vastus. V A S T U S. There's three of them. Now, what do you think the second words in those are standing for? Where they are position wise? Lateralis, medialis, intermediate. There is no way of making them shorter. Oh, good. Talk to them Greek people, the kind of people that sat there and pulled on people's legs when they were dead. And then you have rectus femoris. All right. Obviously, lateral medius is on the inside, lateralis is on the outside, and intermedius is in the middle underneath the rectus femoris. Questions on this? Medius is on the inside for medial. Lateral, lateralis is on the lateral or outside. Inter, intermediate would be in the middle, underneath the rectus femoris. Okay. They all come down, they meet that wonderful patella. But we're talking about thighs and we're talking about hammies. Here's your hammies. Now, we were at um, Cadaver Lab one time, one ages ago, when I was in another place. And the doctor says, Well, how many, how many hamstring, how many muscles in your hamstring? My kid raises her hand up and goes, Well, it's three. It says biceps from our semi membranosis, semi tendinosis. And he goes, it's biceps, so technically there's four. Okay? So that will not be a question of how many. But one of your questions will be, name the hammies. All right. According to him. Okay? So bicep for more. Yeah, where's your other bicep? Where? I thought you said in my room. I no. Said, no. Only if I'm in there. So, yes, in your arm. What is by telling you? By, by is what? Bifocal, where you know you have two lenses. Bicycle, where you have two wheels. Yes, two. So you have two on the bicep. Semimembranosis. All right. Is that going to be on the medial or the lateral side? On the medial side. And how can you remember that? That second M. Semi, which is, that's the same. Membranosis, since it has an M, it's on the medial side. And the semi uh, the semi tendinosis is on the lateral side. Tendinosis, membranosis, biceps femoris. All right. Do we need to go back over the quadriceps? Do we need to go back over these? Bicep, biceps for more. Now, don't get this wrong because what else is on there? Rectus for more. Okay. Bicep for more. Now, we talked about the hamstringy. So, if it has 
four instead of three, like that little story, you know that it's on the back. It has a B for biceps, so it's on the back where your hamstring is. All right, how about some more new ones? Yes, because, you know, you get these guys and they get, oh, i got a pulled groin. Yeah, well, sorry. Let's go back here over here. No, we won't talk about this. All right. Adductor, longus brevis magnus, pectineus, gracilis. I know. I didn't make the words up either. Okay? So, as you can see, these origins are way here in the groin. All right? And they are not abduction, abduction. It's adduction. So these are your, especially you're going to see this in soccer, right? Kickers, okay? But they certainly need, just, they certainly can get strained in any sport, all right? Brevis, so it's brief, okay? So it's shortest. So you know that's going to be way up here. Adductor longus, okay? So that one's brevis, that one's longus. This one here, adductor magnus, comes all the way down. It's got tentacles. It's got all the way. So it's like a great big fan. So it's magnus. It actually, it actually, if you, you can actually just do a Google for just this one, and it will pretty much cover this entire area. And these are additional brevis. And longer, and then that is small, medium, large, small, medium, and Magnus. Short, long, Magnus. All right, Gracilis. You can see this one come all the way up here. Okay, now it's covered up on this side, but here is your pectineus. Okay. The attached origin is way out here, but its attachment is higher. So if you can see that the muscle, right, and if it contracts this way, the femur is gonna, they're gonna go in. Pretty, it's all of them. So they're adductor muscles. All right. We didn't add the sartorius because she loves to say it. One, but and two is, uh, I don't want to. That one was really long, and you know. Okay. All right. So there's your medial thigh muscles. That's when the guy comes in and says, let's look at pull my groin. Well, is it your groin or is it your hip flexor? Okay. That's, and we'll go through that to figure out which one is which. All right. So you all have seen a quadriceps contusion, have you? What's our contusion? Deep bruises, muscle bruises. All right. Somebody... You can get it in basketball, you get it in football, soccer, anything. Where somebody come running along, boom. Sometimes they do this on purpose. All right? You'll see it in basketball where somebody will come down the lane and purposefully hit somebody and frog them in the thigh. They'll do it in soccer. It's a little tougher in football because they got thigh pads on, but it can be done. All right? So, it usually uh, develops as a result of a severe impact to a relaxed thigh that compresses the muscle against the hard surface of the femur. The femur is super hard. If we took a femur, holy smokes, it's like hammer, hammer time. All right? So, I've got the super hard, super hard layer, and I put a piece of steak there, and then I start punching on it. Steak is really just muscle, right? It's going to break down. Same with the muscle inside the body, it'll break down. And the extent of the force and the degree of the thigh relaxation determines the depth of the injury and the amount of structural and functional disruption that takes place. In other words, pretty much gives you, you your degrees of your contusion. If I'm relaxed and you punch on it, or if I'm standing on it and it's contracted, you're going to have, even if you've got the same person, the same amount of force against it, if it's contract, it's ready. If not, there's that stake. 
and that stake gets flattened in there. Now, that femur, as we say, is what do they say? The longest and second strongest bone in the body. So that's pretty tough to get that again. All right. So what I need you to do is I need you to come and put your arm up here, and I'm just going to hit on it. All right. Your arm will represent the femur. Or if you can just sit up here. No? But that's that's how you get your contusion. If you didn't have such a big bone behind it, right, you might end up with a fracture. But so we got grade one and two and three and four. So we got four different grades. You are smart enough to know that the least amount of damage is grade one. No restriction to the range of motion. So, yeah, they feel it, but they're able to move it. You know, sort of like a bad day of riding a bicycle after you hadn't been riding a bike in a couple of, a couple of years. Superficial intramuscular bruise that produces mild hemorrhage, little pain, no swelling, and mild point tenderness. That person's able to play. Okay? You might put them in a better thigh pad. But there's no restriction on their range of motion, and that's important to know. Because if the, you get a restriction in the range of motion, if it's not 90, if they can't get to 90 degrees, they're not playing. Okay? So grade two, contusion is deeper and produces mild pain, mild swelling. Now, don't get crazy and say, oh, that says mild. See, that's a little pain, no swelling. So don't go crazy and say, oh, well, that's mild. So that's grade one. It's a little different here. All right, so if it's mild, it's grade two. The athlete is able to flex the knee no more than 90 degrees. All right, so I'm able to flex here, but I'm not getting it way up there. They need a little help as far as playing, but they can probably play. Certainly need to have some type of a better thigh pad on there than what uh, you get in the equipment room. All right, grade three. Now, this is where you're going to get confused because it says that word moderate, and you're used to moderate meaning grade what? Ankle sprains, right? So, you've got to bump it up one. you got moderate intensity causing pain, swelling. The range of motion is that 45 to 90 degrees, and you certainly have a limp. All right? This person's not playing. They can't get to 90 degrees. So they're not playing. Grade four, major disability. Holy smoke. Uh, represents the blow may have been so intense as to split the fascia, allowing the muscle to protrude. All right, and muscle herniation. Have you ever seen a muscle herniation? All right, I'm going to try and find. i got to try and remember which one I've got this on. Is it that one? Or is it, oh, it's, I think it's on that one. All right. Yeah. Right there. See how that pokes out? Like it's outside, inside out compared to that side. See how it comes out? All right. For all you deer hunters, y'all been deer hunting? Cleaning deer? You peel the muscle off, you peel the skin off, and then there's that silverfish. That silverfish or that backing on it, all right, that's that fascia. It separates the muscles, okay? So you get a hole in there, and so now when the muscle contracts, instead of it being held all together, it's got a place to come out. And you'll see like a little finger come out and say, hey, what's happening? Or even bigger, okay? So you can r rupture that too. If you rupture it, that's just the way it is. So, pain is severe. Now you're talking the last grade here on that one. Severe swelling may lead to a hematoma. Movement is, is, uh, of the knee is severely restricted with 45 degrees of flexion or less. So you're looking at here or less. That's as far as they're, as they're able to move it. Where the tightness from all of that bleeding that's gotten in between the, the cells of the muscle, as you pull it apart, You've got that much contusion in there, it's just too tight for it to go. This person here, 
certainly you've got to watch. Okay? And I'll show you a picture of matter of fact, we'll put it on the slides for tomorrow, but we'll show you a, where they had to do a fasciotomy where they slice somebody open because the swelling was so great on their thigh that it was restricting blood flow below. And so they'll open that up and then just cover it. All right. You got the grades down. How many grades? Good. All right. So let's manage these things. Immediately place in ice uh, in, or place in the knee in flexion to avoid muscle shortening. So, you know, they say, just, ah, just rub some dirt on it. It'll be okay. A lot of that, there's, there's some merit to it because you get frogged in the arm. All right, your arm's usually straight anyways. You don't want to sit like this, but your arm's usually straight. Okay? Uh, so your bicep gets extended. Well, that's just like the, the, the flexion movement. So the flexion movement is your hamstring. So if it's this one, it's not about keeping it straight because now they are not working. To get them flexed, you have to, or to stretch them, track star, right? Flexion at the knee and at the hip, right, or extension at the hip, and you feel it stretch. If it's not, then they're just relaxed, and that can fill up with all that edema and all that goop that, from the swelling. So you want to you wanna place it in flexion. Um, rice, uh, um, Advil, ice after exercise, protective padding, and you need to avoid heat to prevent myositis osphysicans, and it's called something else that Miss Bates was, I guess, is that right? Okay, well, huh. you can use that for all of them, all right? Now, we're going to get Flanker over here. He's going to come up here, and he's going to be a model. So, nice. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's show you how you do this. Is that five minutes? What is that all about? All right, so have, have a seat up here. So he comes in, and he's got a bruise on his thigh, bruise contusion. Okay? Lay down. Okay, is this for this or is this for? All right, so we got, let's do this way on this one so you can see it. All right, got hit right here. You want me, I can do this. You want me to just hit you with it and give you a real one? No, the answer is no. It will be no. All right, so we want to ice it. All right, but in icing it, we also want to get as much as he's, as we can as far as flexion. So if he can only get to 90 degrees, we still want a little more. So we get more flexion with which one? Passive range of motion or active range of motion? Passive, why? All right, there's nothing wrong with his ankle, but you can see I'm putting this around his ankle. You know what I'm fixing to do? Bring it up. Now, because he's going to sit there and the, he's going to want this to loosen up. So if I tie it around his ankle, now, that's as far as he can get, right? We've got him, we've got him all there. I'm going to take this and I'm going to push it up. And then we can start around, pardon this terrible, terrible ace wrap.
So, but we want to continue, and if we have to, we can come back around and do the other figure eight. All right? Now, 20 minutes to this. All right. What's another, what's another Billy in here that you see? That would be great for treatment for this. Huh? Like, we can keep moving that seat up. And so they're essentially getting to where they're like trying to be a grown man ride a tricycle. You know, where there's a whole lot of knee flexion. We just keep moving the seat up and up and up. But that's how we're going to ice it. That, that picture doesn't have this part where we figure eight around the, the ankle. But he tries to go down. It's going to remind him he needs to stay up. All right? All right. You need to put those shoes back on. All right. Myositis. Myo is what? How about this? You ever hear of a myocardial infarction? Myocardial? No. Cardio. Heart. Oh, I thought you said something else. Yeah. The heart muscle. Myo is? Muscle. I'm glad I did that. I'm glad y'all didn't say fat. Yes. It's muscle. Ossificans. All right. Ossificans. If you are too aggressive in treating a contusion to the thigh, we can get calcium deposits. All right. They just, you got to let them just relax, settle down. Don't be throwing ultrasound on it. Okay. Don't be throwing, just time. Time, ice, getting it done. Pain. With a calcium deposit, obviously you're going to get pain. You will also get muscle weakness, soreness, swelling, decreased muscle formation, along with decreased range of motion. All right, so if I put a rock in the middle of a muscle, the range of motion is going to decrease, obviously. And that's essentially what you got. You got a calcium deposit right in the middle of your thigh. Out. Not just your thigh, but you can also get it in your hammy. So, treat. Conservatively, you have to wait a year, just like when we talked about this before. You have to wait a year once the calcium deposit is there. Because if you cut it out by then, before then, I hate the little thing. He just comes back. He's like a squatter in a house. Even though you throw him out, he comes right back. So be conservative. Some of the conservative things you can do is ride the bike, warm up, and Move the seat up so that way, or if on a recumbent bike, you move the seat up. If you're on a regular bike or stationary bike, you move the seat down. All right, muscle strain. You should have learned last week that you need to have what strength. Um, let's see how it was written on your false truth. Wasn't it? Oh, it's over here. All right. Athletes participating in a particular sport should acquire a strength ratio between quadriceps and hamstring muscles. This is where it plays in the hand. It's your muscle strength. Okay? You get your muscle strains caused by a sudden twitch or a sudden contraction, usually caused with a weakened quad or one that is over constricted. When you get strain, you get point tenderness. Okay? And it's more painful with deeper strain, more a uh, little discoloration normally, and it will have spasm, loss of function, and it could lead to a complete tear. See that stuff right there? Yes. So, anybody ever touched this stuff? Huh? You have? Used it this morning. All right? Water soluble, so if you got it on your shirt or anything like that, it's no big deal. Got it in your hair, no big deal. All right? But it's for the ultrasound. But here's the other thing it's good for is 
it takes away the friction if you're trying to find a muscle strain. Put it on there, put it on their quad, and if you funk, come across a place that's that's got a strain, you'll be cruising along, and then your finger will fall right into it. There'll be a little deviation. Okay? If you come across one that's had one, you come across, instead of finding one that's out, you find a little bitty heel. And you can feel that heel. It's harder than the muscle because it's the scar tissue. But it still feels, it doesn't feel like it's bone. It's still got a softness to it. But it is a little harder than the muscle. So you can do that with this. You can just find that muscle strain, push up against it, push into the push across and down into the muscle. If you find a little hole, oop, and it, it'll feel like just falling right into there, you'll light them up. They'll say, whoa, that's, that's where it is. And that's what happened this morning with one of the soccer players that got kicked. You can find that swelling if you know how to feel for it. So we can get that guy in here if you want to feel on his, on his calf what it feels like to find that deviation. So they're going to have sudden stretch, sudden contraction. Now, when we're talking about a sudden stretch or sudden contraction, what about these dynamic stretches? You know what I'm talking about, right? Let's do the majorette and we'll kick all the way up. Or let's, let's try and kick our butts as we're trying to warm up for track. Not a good idea. You're going to end up with a muscle strain. Your muscles are one, they're not warm. Okay? Two, you're using momentum, and you can't stop momentum. All right? That combination combined with uh, stretching before then, now you've already fatigued the muscle, and the muscle is already susceptible to being hurt. And then you do dynamic stuff, and you end up having a muscle strain. This guy's got a tear on really hairy legs. But it rolls up. You're not going to miss it. The muscle just peels off. There's a big bump where the muscle is. All right. So if you've got, you need to certainly go and see your orthopedist because you're going to need to get that done with um, surgery. Track, okay. strain your muscle. What are we going to do? need it. Exactly. It just doesn't make him an invalid for the rest of the season. Times that I have given somebody crutches and said, use them over the weekend as you need. On Monday, they're driving. Well, that's because in that initial phase, they didn't, they didn't screw up their stuff anymore. To prevent the injury, prevent even more. So a tear and then get fibers torn because the if you need which is ice, does not need to begin a tear. Get these folks that are Hey, I'm uh, I'm the uh, guru in town. You got a pain? Got so, all right. So the, the, it can track further. All right. Thank you. Comes back. Agonist in the the other one. All right. right. I've got. What's Crazy, but able to stretch. 
Okay. And it's going to oh. cause more three. Leave it. 